For most Russians, war has been something they watch on television or see on the internet. But not for those who live close to the Ukrainian border. The heaviest fighting has been raging along the 1,000-kilometer front line, but the border between the two countries is much larger, and the situation around it has been increasingly tense. In Russia, the region that's been affected the most is Belgorod. Just last month, Ukrainian forces struck a power plant and an ammo depot. Several Russian villages bordering Ukraine have also come under shelling, forcing residents to flee. Finding missile debris in your backyard or at a playground has become run on the mill here. Even the city of Belgorod, the provincial capital some 50 kilometers from the border, is no longer safe. I went to Belgorod to see everything for myself. I wanted to find out how Russians living there feel about this conflict now that it's knocking on their doors. Before I start anything, I just want to uh, give a huge shout out to the over 17,000 subscribers on this channel. Uh, thank you very much uh, for those of you who joined me recently and uh, for those who have been following me since day one. A few weeks ago, I asked you, what would you want me to film next? And the majority voted uh, for a video about Russian towns near the Ukrainian border. So here I am, uh, I'm gonna jump on this uh, train bound for Belga. It's a Russian city located just a few kilometers from the Ukrainian border. And it's safe to say that there is no other place in Russia where this conflict is so deeply felt. When the conflict broke out, air travel was shut down in all Russian regions bordering Ukraine, so you can only get there by train. Well, a couple of disturbing news came in uh, while I was on the train. Uh, another small town in the Belgard region came out of shelling from Ukrainian forces. Uh, several people got hurt. Uh, and then uh, Putin raised the security alert level in four regions bordering Ukraine, including this one. Uh, I'm not sure what this means. I'm pretty sure security will be tightened up. Uh, but I guess we'll find out soon. Before going to Belgorod, I contacted Yevgeny, a local resident who's been featured on Russia's most popular independent news show. He kindly agreed to show me around. Где, где упало, куда попало. Мне на глазах хлопнули на ту большую подстанцию. Я прям видел, как попадание, потому что был напротив прям. Все-таки город прифронтовой, у нас очень много ВАИ. Он можно посмотреть. Военная автоинспекция. I'd spent less than an hour in the city when I was approached by a man who was suspicious about me filming in the dark. Да я журналист, блогер, мне канал. Документы есть? Ну, у меня канал на YouTube, там нет документов. Снимаем просто про обстановку в городе, про то, как э, люди живут. Ну, положим, снимать. The city has been patrolled day and night since the Russian military fell back from the neighboring Kharkiv region and Kyiv's forces took positions along the border, just an hour drive from Belgorod. Вы дружинник? Да, дружинник. Там в машине сидят сотрудники полиции. Они сейчас будут вам вопросы задавать. Вы сейчас будете материалы удалять. Well, I'm uh, in my hotel room and I just um, wanted to quickly show you a few local news channels on Telegram that I signed up for. And FYI, Telegram, which is a messaging app, has become the uh, prime information source for Russians seeking unofficial viewpoints. Anyway, here's this uh, uh, news channel uh, with 330,000 subscribers, uh, which is almost the Belgrade's entire population, so it's kind of telling. Uh, and you know, a year ago, this was a small media outlet that uh, 
you know, used to report about things like car accidents, um, you know, traffic, uh, petty crimes, uh, you know, that kind of stuff. Now, 80% of the news are related to war. Ukrainian shelling, work of the local air defense systems, missile debris falling in someone's house, uh, civilians getting killed, yeah. So the once quiet life in this Russian city and region is no more. That night, I couldn't sleep a wink. When you were forced to listen to every little sound, fearing the city might come under shelling again, it gets under your skin. So we're headed towards the Ukrainian border. Uh, things have been increasingly tense there. You might, uh, well, come under shelling or, uh, you know, the worst case scenario, uh, run into a uh, Ukrainian sabotage and reconnaissance group. There is something you should know about Evgeny. He's pro-Russian and wears the letter Z, an unofficial symbol of support for the country's armed forces in Ukraine. At the time we met in Belgorod, Evgeny was shopping for military gear as he was getting ready in case he's called up to fight in Ukraine. До границы всего ничего. В любой момент может возникнуть так, что некогда будет забираться. I also interviewed people who, let's say, were less enthusiastic about the war in Ukraine. But Evgeny was the only one who had the balls to take me to the border, which locals refer to as the front line. Many locals fear that the Ukrainians will cross the border in advance on Belgorod, while the bulk of the Russian forces are stuck elsewhere along the overstretched front line. This is us driving down this road, and here's this line. It's the border with Ukraine. Yeah, we've just passed the checkpoint. Uh, behind this checkpoint, uh, it's uh, kind of a no-go zone. Uh, no one is allowed there, it's off limits. It's like really close to the border. Yeah, and here you can see on our right is uh, some of the trenches and you know some of the uh, preparations in place, uh, just in case, as they say. We entered Shebekino, a small town just five kilometers from the border. Several facilities had been hit here just days before we arrived, including a chemical plant and a preschool. Luckily, children weren't there. All the schools had already closed, with kids sent home. That's the impact uh, from Michelle. Uh, Ukraine is really close. It's like five, six kilometers from where we're now. So it's really close. And uh, well, this building right here uh, that came out of shelling, as far as I understand, it's, uh, it's kind of a local market. The mall was struck in broad daylight when there were many customers inside. Two people were seriously wounded, according to the local media. And again, someone wasn't happy about me shooting at the site. Security told us to leave the place. Uh, they're kind of uh, on the edge and they uh, can probably see that they're following us right now. Yeah, so uh, we better get going. Surprisingly, the mall is still open, but there is hardly any business going on here. One thing I can say for sure, this shopping mall is absolutely deserted. No one wants to shop here anymore. Не страшно тут в городе находиться? Страшно. Что сделать? Уехать? Куда? Где нас кто ждет? Не знаю, к родственникам подальше в глубь России. Родственники все в Белгороде. Ох, ничего себе! Это последствия обстрела что ли? Когда что закончится, да? Наверное, никогда. Пока Путин власти не закончится. Да? Ну что-нибудь еще придумают. Нельзя русскому народу 
спокойно жить. Shelling and sudden explosions are something that people have grown accustomed to. Even I heard distant blasts at least four or five times in just two days. It even happened right in the middle of an interview. We just heard a blast. It uh, sounds like uh, an air defense system is working. А нам что теперь делать? Нам ничего. Жить дальше все нормально. ПВО молодцы. Они стараются за всех сил. Они работают, поэтому у нас все хорошо. This is Konstantin. He's a local businessman and quite a character. Among other things, he sells buckle knife belts, which he swore he never used in a real fight, although the blades are quite sharp. Санкции вам не мешают вести этот бизнес? Немножко помешали. Я все больше объем продавал по на eBay, на Etsy, продавал все на США, на Европу. Но как они там закрылись, так конечно там все остановились магазины. Ничего страшного, развиваем наши. Теперь продаем здесь. Самое простое исполнение в нержавеющей стали 15 тысяч рублей. Ну это все с ремнем полностью со всеми делами. Самое красивое золотое это уже до 25 тысяч. Unlike many of his neighbors, Konstantin has money to leave the troubled region, but he says he's staying until Russia wins. Победа России это что будет означать в этой войне? Как вы себе ее представляете? Победа России это как минимум отступление, как минимум, как минимум успокоение НАТО и всех подобных стран. But of course, there are those who've left, especially after projectiles started to fly over Belgorod, the original capital that was considered to be relatively safe until recently. Apparently, uh, there was a uh, Ukrainian missile or drone flying over the city and um, it was hit by the town's air defense systems. and. Uh, the debris fell down uh, on the building. Unfortunately, I can't get like really close because the place is cordoned off by the police and they're like they're on the edge. Luckily, no one got killed, but there was a lot of smoke and you know rubble all over the place. This was one of the first times when residents of a big city in Russia saw this war uh, up close. Страшно. Если бы я сидела там, ну это очень страшно. Studies show that most Russians still support their country's actions in Ukraine. But maybe this has changed now that the fighting is getting closer to their homes. I talked with the locals who lived in another house that came under shelling. По-вашему, нужно все-таки продолжать до победного? Ну, конечно. Я считаю, что если бы мы, возможно, не отреагировали бы первыми, наверное, города Белгорода, может, уже точно не было бы. Это вот мое мнение. Mm -hmm. Мы опередили просто. Неприятно, что мы начали эту войну первыми. Неприятно. Но я думаю, что все-таки это в целях нашей безопасности было сделано. Сейчас мы тоже испытываем эти страдания. Люди гибнут. Шебекинский район вчера обстреляли очень сильно. Just so you know, I am well aware that Ukrainian towns and infrastructure are also being hit and that ordinary Ukrainians are also suffering. The last thing I want is to turn this into a stupid contest of who's been hit the hardest or who's inflicted more damage. This is not what this video is about. It's about this particular community uh, its people and the impact that this conflict has on their lives. Ukraine's never claimed responsibility for any attacks on Russian territory and says it's only interested in driving out Russia's forces. Yet for many locals, the real question is not who's behind the attacks, but when they're going to strike again. <laughs> Oh, the grandma is really itchy. <laughs> okay, let's go and check out this basement. 
When the shelling intensified, Evgeny took the keys from the basement of his apartment building, teamed up with other men in the neighborhood and turned it into an improvised bomb shelter. There may be no imminent threat to the city, but when someone sets up a bomb shelter in his apartment building, it's telling. Сначала украинцы готовились, прятались в подвалах, а сейчас мы к этому готовимся. Некий опыт подсказывает, что лучше сделать так. А что вы проверяли? Чтобы чисто было. Чтобы чисто было. Кренма is still here, and she's like, she's asking all those questions, like who we are and what we're doing in the basement. So she's she's on alert. Вы поддерживаете войну, специальную военную я, операцию, то, что Россия начала? Я не обсуждаю политику, я не обсуждаю свое отношение к происходящей ситуации. Расскажите про город до 24 февраля. Что из себя представлял Белгород? Обычный, наверное, провинциальный город, тихий, всегда славился чистотой. Anna, another local resident I interviewed in Belgorod, saw how her hometown has gradually transformed from a quiet provincial capital to a frontline city as national flags, military vehicles, and men wearing Z symbols became more and more visible on the streets. News about shelling and civilian casualties prompted some to evacuate. Those who've stayed have been hardened by the conflict with each passing day. Even Anna, a timid lawyer who'd never really been into politics, found herself dragged in and began following the conflict closely. The reaction killed many Ukrainians, who wrote in the comments about how it's cool, now we're going to make fun of the children of the Belgorod. It was like a little bit... Where do you read this? Well, I try not to do this, because it's a very traumatic story, but I go to the Ukrainian public and read the comments. And it's very sad. Война на Украине или специальная военная операция? Да, война. Ребят, ну, специальная военная операция — это юридический термин. Это война самая настоящая. For an outsider, it's hard to comprehend the scale of the tragedy that's been playing out here since February 24th. In Belgorod, it's not just a war between neighbors, but close friends as well. До 14 года в Харьков катались, просто там, не знаю, погулять в магазины, не знаю, ремонтировали зубы в Харькове, то есть все делали в Харькове, потому что там было намного дешевле глобально, чем в Белгороде. И, ну, Харьков большой красивый город, очень уютный, все его очень любили, и фактически на ну, час езды на электричке. I'm in central Belgorod, and according to Google Maps, it's uh, less than an hour and a half drive from here to uh, central Kharkiv in Ukraine. It's just crazy how uh, close and how uh, distant uh, the two cities are. A lot of people in Belgorod have relatives in Ukraine. A waitress in the cafe where I interviewed Evgeny told us how she still keeps in touch with the Ukrainian part of her family, although their relationship is becoming strained and awkward. Они пытаются немножечко нас задеть, ну вот в плане, вот вы здесь, у вас типа там все хорошо, а вот наконец-то вы там поняли, каково это, когда там какие-то, хлоп... ну не знаю, какие-то взрывы, хлопки, там что-то такое, вот. А... Но мы стараемся переводить на другую тему и, ну, говорить вообще, как дела там, чем помочь. On our way back from the border town of Shibekina, we stopped by a local church. Evgeny just happened to know the local priest. When the war broke out, Father Vyacheslav found himself facing a moral dilemma that is quite typical for many in this region. No, у меня вот племянник высыл, да, племянник жены, правильно сказать, правильно, да, высыл. А мой вот сейчас под призыв попадает здесь. Вот как будет, когда они там встретятся, да, два два двоюродных брата. Поэтому мы относимся, ну вот как такому. 
брата убийственному вот такому действию. So, what can you do if you want to support your country during times of war, but you don't really hate the enemy? Father Vyacheslav, Anna, and Evgeny, three people from different walks of life are now doing the same thing, helping Ukrainian refugees fleeing into Russia. It's a big and important story in and of itself. I'll make a separate video about it as I gather more evidence and interviews. <laughs> In Ukraine, people might say, what's happening in Belgorod is just a small fraction of what we've been through. And that's true. Yet after talking to a lot of people here and seeing how their life and opinions are changing by the day, I couldn't help but think, nothing here is hasting the war's end. It's just throwing more fuel on the fire. Что-то должны делать, чем-то меняться, то есть э, от, сво от своего эгоизма отказываться, делиться чем-то. Ну, мне кажется, не все это прочувствуют. Когда вс все почувствуют, когда все обратятся сердцем своим, сердце свое смягчат, тогда будет и э, движение к миру.